In the Dobbs case, the court will consider whether or not pre-viability bans on abortion are constitutional. And in doing so, it could overrule its landmark case of almost 50 years ago, Roe v. Wade. This is the case for everyone to be watching, to see what is that, that standard. You know, are we able to, to restrict abortion prior to viability? Two prominent abortion fighters, Americans United for Life President Katherine Foster and Susan B. Anthony List President Marjorie Dannenfelser, say it's hard to overstate this case's importance. I think that because uh, four Supreme Court justices had to agree to take up this law, that they were pretty sure that they had some sort of consensus to alter the current Supreme Court view of, of Roe versus Wade. The court will consider a Mississippi law that prohibits abortion after 15 weeks, except for a medical emergency or severe fetal abnormality. What's radical is that in asking the court to uphold its state law, Mississippi is directly challenging the precedent in Roe and the 1992 decision in Casey v. Plant Parenthood a clear ruling that states cannot ban pre-viability abortions, that is, abortions before a child can survive outside the womb. This is the first time in 30 years that the court has been explicitly asked to overturn Roe. Roe declared that the right to privacy includes the right for women to choose abortion, and it warned that denying abortion would bring hardship. In Casey, the court argued that women had come to rely on it. It turned into the big lie. There is economic freedom. To tell us that we can't just survive, that we can't be women in America without legalized abortion, what an offensive notion. We should be able to do that. That's what we're built for. In Casey, the court also used stare decisis, the legal principle that courts must follow precedent to justify Roe. Foster and many other scholars insist, however, that many reasons exist for overturning Roe, including social unrest, which shows that it is not settled. In fact, um, Supreme Court Justice now Amy Coney Barrett, in her confirmation hearings, she was asked if she believed that Roe was a settled issue. And her response, it, it hit the nail on the head. She said, well, I keep getting questions about Roe, which I think to me says that it's not settled. Across the country, rallies to reverse Roe have begun. Even if the court doesn't decide to overturn, it could still uphold the Mississippi law, signaling to states that the door is open for more restrictions. But Foster and Dannenfelser are preparing for Roe to be overhauled and looking to the states. The people who really are focused on this are the governors of this country, and they are the new leaders when it comes to the pro-life issue. Dannenfelser is especially mindful of states with so-called trigger laws that could immediately outlaw abortion if Roe is overturned. They'll need extra political and legislative help plus services for women. For Foster, the work is personal as well. She had an abortion 20 years ago. I know what it's like to sit in that waiting room and, um, and feel so conflicted and, and the feelings of fear and helplessness and just totally out of control. For almost 50 years, Roe has encouraged and paved the way for such abortions. Now, Foster, Dannenfelser, and untold women and men are wondering if we're on the verge of a new era. On December 1st, due to COVID restrictions, the public will not be allowed inside the court, but outside large crowds are expected in anticipation of a ruling in the months to come that could radically alter the abortion landscape. Reporting in Washington, Heather Sells, CBN News.